There are many everyday uses for electricity in the home. It's very important to understand electricity and be able to use it safely. That's what this film is about. Different electrical devices have different power ratings. They use more or less electricity according to their power and take greater or small electric currents when they're in use. Let's look at three very common domestic items. We'll start with an ordinary electric light bulb, a 60 watt bulb. It takes very little current indeed. Switch it off and on again. The amount of electrical energy being used is measured by an electricity meter, a joule meter. The greater the consumption, the more quickly the disc rotates and the counters change. A colour television set. This has a greater power rating. It takes a big surge of current when it's first switched on, then settles to a smaller value. The disc of the joule meter rotates rather faster than it did with the 60 watt bulb. An electric fire. This one has two 1000 watt heating elements, so its power rating is much higher than the bulb or the television set. One bar on. Now let's switch on the other element. You can see that the fire now takes a current of over 8 amps, much higher than for the other appliances. Using an electric fire means using a lot of electricity. Watch the disc on the meter and see how it speeds up when we switch on the second bar of the fire, doubling the power. Now for another demonstration. Any electrical appliance will use up more electricity if it has to do more work. Producing any kind of energy means using up some other kind. This electric drill turns electrical energy into mechanical energy, the rotation of the drill bit. When it's simply turning in air, it takes a quite small current to run the motor. But as soon as we start drilling into a block of metal, this is harder work for the motor and its power consumption increases. Watch the needle of the ammeter. When a wire carries a current, it heats up. For a given metal, the thicker the wire, the smaller its electrical resistance. So a given current heats it less. We're going to pass a constant current around this loop, which has thick wire at the top and thin at the bottom. Watch what happens. The thinner wire got so hot that it melted and broke it couldn't carry that particular current. Another demonstration, and we'll need the correct type of fire extinguisher handy for this one. The greater the current to be carried, the thicker the cable must be. This 2000 watt electric fire takes a high current, as we saw. Let's look at what happens if we connect it to the mains with thin lighting flex, which isn't intended to carry such a big current. The wire inside the insulation is thin and its resistance will cause it to heat up as the current flows. After a quite short time, watch what happens. The two 1000 watt heating elements are taking a big current. Too big for this flex. Imagine this happening in your home, maybe with no one in the room. Time to use that extinguisher.
Many, many fires are started by faulty wiring, especially by using cables that won't carry the current taken by appliances like fires and kettles and so on. Sooner or later, the wire gets so hot that the insulation melts and a fire is started. At the Greater Manchester County Fire Service headquarters, the safety officer talks about one such tragedy. This piece of wiring was taken from a house in which two children died in a fire. The fire was started because of faulty wiring and the original source of the ignition was in fact destroyed. When we went through the building, we found that wiring typical of this went right through the house. The occupier had made taped joints and fastened together different thicknesses of wire. He had not used a proper junction box and he had not obeyed the golden rule which is if you are going to wire anything call in the experts. We make use of the fact that a wire will melt if it carries too high a current in fuses. This 60 watt bulb takes only a small current so we use a quite thin fuse wire. If anything goes wrong, say a short circuit, which means that a much greater current flows, the fuse will blow. But otherwise, it stays intact. In many modern fuses, of course, the fuse wire is hidden inside a little cartridge, and you can't see it. That fuse will only carry a current of three amperes or so. If we put it in circuit with an electric fire, which takes a much bigger current, the bigger current will cause the fuse wire to melt and cut off the supply to the fire. So, for a circuit supplying higher power appliances, we use thicker fuse wire, which will carry the higher current. But you only use such a fuse when there are things like fires and kettles to be connected up. The resistance is low because the wire is thick and it doesn't reach melting point. But using the correct fuses won't help you if you make other connections wrongly. We're going to wire up an electric fire, deliberately, very carelessly. Like our other demonstrations, this isn't one for you to try for yourself. Did you notice that straggly bit of wire sticking out? When we connect this, the live wire, to the junction box, that strand's left touching the body of the fire. And the earth lead, green, here, as on some older cable, but it's green and yellow on modern cable, hasn't been connected to the earth connection on the fire. We'll put the fire together again. Really, of course, an appliance like this should only be wired up by an expert electrician. The fire works perfectly well. What you can't tell by just looking is that all the metal work is live because of that stray bit of live wire touching it. Watch. you'd get a severe electrical shock and perhaps a terrible burn if you touched any part of the fire. Now suppose there was still that frayed lead touching the metal casing, but that the earth lead had been connected up. Remember the earth leads green and yellow on modern wiring, but there's still a lot in use with just this green insulation. Like all connections, the earth lead must be tightly held in place. Now, when we switch on, a large current will pass to earth from the live casing, enough to blow the fuse. There'll now be no electrical supply to the fire, and it will be perfectly safe. The live lead, it's nowadays brown, should have no stray strands. There should be no bare wire showing at all outside the junction box. Then, and only then, with the earth lead properly connected, is the fire safe to use. There's no chance that the casing will be live, as we can test by using the light bulb again. It's quite safe to touch, although of course it may be hot when it's been on for some time. Now a word or two about electrical plugs. 
these must be wired up correctly. Power cable has three separate leads. Earth's in the middle, neutral on the left and live on the right. The live lead, nowadays coloured brown, goes to this terminal, which will have a letter L somewhere near it. The separate strands of wire must be twisted together and the hole looped neatly around the terminal. All screws must be firmly tightened. That's the live connection. The earth lead is nowadays green and yellow and connects to the top terminal, which will have an E near it. The neutral lead is nowadays blue and connects to the left-hand terminal, which will have an N somewhere near it. Like this, the plug wouldn't work. We've got to put in a fuse. Modern fuses consist of a wire of suitable thickness enclosed in a small cartridge. They're marked with the greatest current they can carry without blowing. This 3 ampere fuse is right for an appliance like a television set or hi-fi. A reading lamp would need a 2 ampere fuse. We need a fuse with a thicker wire for more powerful appliances. A 13 amp fuse is used for things like electric fires, convector heaters, irons and kettles. The fuse goes in like this and then the top must be firmly screwed in place. You mustn't be able to see the separate leads inside the outer covering of the cable and the whole thing must be firm and tight and fitted with the correct fuse. Houses should be wired up on the ring main system. There's got to be a joule meter to measure the amount of electricity used and a fuse box and main switch for the ring main circuit. The cable, this is a mock-up of a power circuit for fires and so on with thick power cable, is installed in a great loop with sockets at various convenient places, in the skirting board or on the wall. In this layout, each socket has its own switch. You can see that it's laid out in a loop, the ring main circuit. If we look at the back, you can see how the three leads enter and leave the socket. For permanent wiring, the live lead is red, Earth, here coloured green, and neutral, black. All home wiring should be properly connected up like this. There are many electrical gadgets in a kitchen. Electric kettles must be plugged into the power circuit with 13 amp fuses in the plugs. So must washing machines, which have high power electric heaters in them. The fridge should have a plug with a 5 amp fuse. Electric cookers take a very large current when everything's switched on and must have their own quite separate power circuit with very thick supply cables. You can't wire them up yourself or run them off the ordinary ring main. Electric immersion heaters also run off quite separate circuits and you can't install them yourselves. House lighting takes a relatively small current and there's always a separate lighting circuit. Here the fuse in the plug must be only 2 ampere so it blows and cuts off the current if it becomes greater than that, because of a fault of some kind. Otherwise, the thinner cable of the lighting circuit might heat up and cause a fire. There should be a proper fuse box with a fuse for each ring main circuit and for each lighting circuit, as well as fuses in all the plugs attached to various appliances. Where the main supply comes into the house, there should be a main switch and company fuses which can only be replaced by electricians working for the electricity supply board. And, of course, there's got to be a meter. As we said before, misusing electricity can be highly dangerous. The fire safety officer again. A simple domestic appliance can be a source of hazard. Take this iron. The plug. What's left of the iron itself. And the wiring with the insulation stripped off. The lady who used this used it regularly every day to iron her daily washing. What she didn't realize that as she was ironing the flex was rubbing on the edge of the ironing board and after many weeks of uh, this process going on eventually the insulation wore through 
the wires began to arc and in fact caused a small fire, a small fire which could in fact have been a lot more serious. This double adapter was taken from a house where the occupier had used not only this one but a second one into the front and then taken off additional appliances. These additional appliances such as electric fires or kettles caused too great a load on the system and one can see where the pins had begun to overheat and melt and burn the plastic. This could have been the start of a very serious fire. Fuses must be correctly rated. In this particular house, the fuse box was the source of a fire. A short had occurred and unfortunately the occupier had fitted a non-standard fuse, in fact a piece of copper wire. It obviously did not blow and meant therefore that the insulation on the wires began to melt. When the wiring had been put in it had been placed next to a gas pipe and as the wiring got hotter and hotter this in fact melted the gas pipe making a small hole allowed the gas to escape the gas was ignited by the burning insulation and a serious house fire occurred creating severe damage to the ground floor of the dwelling